Greetings. My name is Dr. Fuller. I would like to introduce you to the mathematical world around you. I have a large room in my house that is divided into two spaces. One space is for dining, with a table, chairs, and a china cabinet. The other space is a living area with a television, fireplace, and comfy seating. I want to do the floor in two parts, one with carpet and one with wood. This will make the area look like two spaces rather than one large room. The room is 10 feet wide and 24 feet long. Many products for covering surfaces, such as flooring, paint, concrete, and even grass seed, are often sold by the square foot. To find out how much hardwood and carpet I need, I must calculate the area in square feet. When you learn about multiplication, you most likely learned about the area model. The area of a rectangle is found by multiplying the length and the width together. Therefore, the area of the entire room is 24 times 10, or 240 square feet. I can separate the room anywhere along the 24-foot length. For example, I could have a 5-foot wide section of wood for the dining area. The living space would then be 24 minus 5, or 19 feet long. I can find the area of the hardwood and carpet by multiplying the width, 10 feet, by the length of each section. 10 times 5 is 50 square feet for hardwood. 10 times 19 is 190 square feet for carpet. Notice that the sum of the two separate areas is the same as the area of the whole amount. Do you think the relationship between the area of the whole and the sum of the parts will still be the same if I make the dining area larger? For example, I decide to make the dining area 8 feet wide to provide more room when family and friends visit. 24 minus 8 is 16. The area of the dining room is 80 square feet, and the area of the living room is 160 square feet. The room is still the same size, 240 square feet. However, the dimensions of the pieces changed. This leads to two pieces of exciting math you can see with the area model. One comes from breaking down the previous area statement. I will start with the first example with a 5-foot long dining area. The 50 came from finding the area by multiplying the room's width, 10, by the length of the wood section, 5. The area of the carpet came from multiplying the width of the room by the remaining length, or 19. The area of the entire room is the width, 10, multiplied by the length, 24. Now, notice that the length of the room can be represented by the sum of the two lengths, 5 and 19. Let's look at the second example with an 8-foot dining area. 8 times 10 is 80 square feet, which is the area of the wood flooring. The carpet is also 10 feet wide, but is 16 feet long for an area of 160 square feet. The room's length can be represented by the sum of the dining and living space's lengths, 8 and 16 feet. Notice the similarities between the two equations. On the left side of both equations, the width is multiplied by the two parts of the length. The two products are then added together. On the right side of both equations, the width is multiplied by the sum of the two parts of the length. In fact, no matter where we divide the room, we can generate a similar true statement. We can generalize the equation to the following. A times the sum of M and N is the same as A times M plus A times N. This equation represents the distributive property of multiplication over addition. The distributive property states that the product between a number and the sum of two or more values is the same as the sum of the products between the number and each value. The definition is a mouthful, but what it means is powerful. 
it allows us to expand expressions to make them easier to work with. Let me show you an example. A company that sells and installs flooring is having a special deal. Right now, each room is $50 for installation plus the cost of flooring. With this sale, all the types of flooring I am interested in are the same price per room. I can represent the cost with the expression 50 plus F with F representing the flooring cost per room. Since I am putting carpet and wood down, this counts as two rooms. I can expand this expression using the distributed property. It says the product of a number and a sum is the same as finding the product between the number and each part of the sum, then finding the sum of the products. Looking at the expression, I can now read the fixed cost of putting new flooring in my living room. $100. I do not know the cost of flooring yet, which is represented by 2F. I plan to paint the four walls of the room as well. The cost to paint one wall is $12 in materials plus the price of paint, represented by the expression 12 plus P. What expression represents the cost to paint the room and what is the fixed cost? To create an expression representing the whole room, we multiply 12 plus P by 4 to represent the cost of the room. Applying the distributed property, I multiply the 4 by each of the terms inside the parentheses. 4 times 12 is 48, and 4 times P is 4P. The fixed cost to paint the room is $48. Because the distributed property states the two expressions are the same, you can also reverse the process. For example, an expression representing the cost to replace the windows in the room is 3W plus 360. The term 3W represents the cost of three identical windows and 360 is the installation cost. Notice that both terms, 3W and 360, are divisible by 3. I can factor it out of both terms. Then I can apply the distributed property. The factored expression reflects that each window has a variable cost, W, and a fixed installation cost of $120. The distributive property allows us to manipulate expressions to make them easier to work with or find information. There are many properties that make working with mathematical statements and equations easier. Learning them not only makes the math simpler, but they also make the math make sense. In my mathematical world, I have one little problem. I am redesigning one rectangular area of my yard, and I need to make some decisions. Please help me by using the distributive property to solve some problems I encountered. One part of the area will have grass, while the other section will contain a garden. The length of the rectangle is 60 feet. The grass section is 20 feet wide, as shown in the diagram. The width of the garden is currently unknown. Write an expression representing the entire rectangle's area as a product. What is the area of the part with grass? Apply the distributive property of multiplication over addition to expand your expression. What is the area of the garden component? I decide to put grass seed down, but I must rent a spreader. The expression 24 plus 1,200x represents the cost to put down grass seed, with the cost of the spreader being $24. What might the term 1,200x and its components mean in this expression? Apply the distributed property to the expression to find the cost per square foot. One three-pound bag of grass seed costs $8.98 and covers 600 square feet. What is the cost of covering the area with grass seed without tax? You find a place that sells grass seed in bulk. They advertise a price of 142 ten thousandths of a dollar per square foot. 
What is the total cost to put grass seed down if I purchase from this location? A neighbor says he will do it for $60. Explain why this is a good or a bad deal. I decide to plant the garden area in 5 by 2 foot sections. Each section will be composed of four boards, some soil, mulch, and eight plants. Write an expression to represent the cost of one section. I plan to plant four identical sections. Write an expression to represent the total cost of the garden area. Apply the distributed property to write the expanded expression. Take a look and you will see a mathematical world around you filled with the properties of algebra. While properties of algebra help us apply mathematical rules to solve problems, they can be found in real-world situations like the relationship between the area model and the distributed property in this video. Properties help us understand and use mathematical relationships, and those are all around us.